Uh, hi, my name's Chris. Um, I'm going to talk to you today about uh, alternatives to Docker and how you can replace Docker in your infrastructure. And a few minutes ago when I was telling Sophia what I was talking about, she asked why I hated Docker. Um, and that's not the case, but you know, alternatives are good and I thought I'd share some of these with you. Um, so how many people, well, yeah, there. Um, how many people here are using containers in production? It's probably a lot now, right? How many of you are using something other than Docker to run those containers in production? All right, cool, that's more than I thought there was gonna be here. <laughs> um, so really quickly, let's break down a little bit of what Docker does. Docker is a, um, interacts with a runtime. It's a user interface and an API. Uh, it's used for building images and sharing images. Um, and it's generally, it's a, it's a large daemon that kind of handles a whole bunch of things, right? Um, to clarify real quick, a container runtime is a low-level program that just creates, runs, and stops containers. The engine is the user interface that creates images and manages images and creates the definition of the container that the runtime uses to create it. Um, unfortunately, people tend to use these two things uh, interchangeably. So some example runtimes here. Uh, run, run C is kind of the standard container runtime. It's actually used by Docker through its interface with container D, but you can use it on its own. You can use it on the CLI itself, or you can use it with a wrapper like a system D unit or uh, just a bash script. Uh, Kata is another container runtime. It's used for running containers inside of uh, virtual machines. Um, these are tiny, um, quick to start virtual machines that are uh, great for um, a little bit of additional security. And these come out of the, the Intel Clear Container and HyperSH, uh, Hyper-V technology. Um, again, container engines are the user interface and the image management portion. It's the piece that they're higher level applications and they're actually designed to be worked with by humans. Um, Cryo is kind of the, um, one of the de facto container engines now. This is what's used by the Kubernetes project. It works with the Cry standard or container runtime interface. Um, and it talks to Run C down below. Podman's another potential container engine. It uh, originally was designed to debug and troubleshoot the um, cryo uh, pods in Kubernetes, but it can be used as a drop-in replacement for Docker. So like Podman run, Docker run, Podman build, Docker build. It'll just, for almost everything, just be a drop-in replacement. Rocket is a daemonless engine that is, uh, uses the default unit of an application, or considers a Kubernetes pod the default unit of an application. And it's got some really cool tools for um, uh, process segregation or keeping processes away from one another. So you can go from a single process all the way up to um, confined within its own virtual machine. Singularity is a container engine that's used a lot for research in HPC. And it's got really good, robust GPU support for research workloads. Um, it has its own image format, but it also can use the Docker image format. And they're working toward compatibility with the Kubernetes Cry interface. So someday, Kubernetes can run singularity containers for you. LXD is a or, uh, container engine that's used for interacting with the LXC runtime in the canonical projects. Um, they run full system containers or like a full operating system in the container. And LexD is a run is a user interface and an API that makes working with the daemon or the runtime a little more simple. Uh, there are also a lot of tools that you can use to replace just small pieces of what Docker does. Um, they generally follow the Unix philosophy of doing one thing and doing it well. Uh, Scopio is an example of this. This is a project from the Project Atomic team. It's a command line tool for inspecting local and remote images and it can push and pull images to registries and repositories. But that's all it does. It doesn't build images, it doesn't run containers, it just inspects and allows you to run, or to move image, container images back and forth. Um, Builda is probably one of my favorite tools and I talk about it a lot. It's a great way to um, build container images without using Docker. You can actually use whatever tools you want with or without a Docker file. So you could build a container image with a Python script or a make file whatever you would like to use to combine all those layers into a container image. And then when it comes to orchestration, um, really at the moment Kubernetes is the best option, I think, in my own opinion. Um, there's not anything else that's really in the same ballpark at the moment, so just use Kubernetes until we have more and better competing um, alternatives for container orchestration. 
And uh, thank you very much. My name is Chris Collins. And if you'd like to talk about containers or anything else, uh, I'd love to talk to you. Thank you.